More than a decade after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, a report was released by the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee on the interrogation techniques of al-Qaeda suspects used by the CIA. The report revealed that detainees were subjected to waterboarding, isolation, confinement, extreme heat and cold, and physical abuse. Additionally, detainees were subjected to one of the most psychologically and physically damaging enhanced interrogation techniques, sleep deprivation. While lack of sleep is something every person can relate to, governments around the world have used sleep deprivation as a form of torture because of its impact on cognitive function, mood, alertness, and overall well-being. Sleep is vital to our survival, as important as the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. Yet, the purpose of sleep, and how it works, is not so easily understood. In this second Amy episode, I explore an activity we spend a third of our lives doing, sleep. Sleep. We love to do it, we all need it. It's so important to our health and brain development that newborn babies spend 16 to 17 hours a day doing it. You can almost say that sleep is food for the brain. But what is the science of sleep? The human body has an inherent 24-hour biological clock, also known as circadian rhythm, that controls different behaviors and physiological states, like waking, sleeping, and body temperature. Do you ever wonder why you feel sleepy or cold or hungry at certain times of the day every day? This is not a random phenomenon. Your brain is programmed to do certain things during a 24-hour cycle. As humans, we are awake during the day and sleep at night as dictated by our circadian rhythm. Of course, working the night shift or traveling to different time zones can disrupt this process. On a cellular level, our sleep-wake cycle is regulated by the suprachiasmatic nucleus, SCN a group of cells located in the hypothalamus of the brain. These cells respond to light and dark signals. During the day, light travels via the optic nerve of the eye to the SEN, triggering the pineal gland to reduce the production of the sleep hormone, melatonin. This signals your internal biologic clock that it's time to be awake. In darkness, the SEN signals the pineal gland to increase the production of melatonin, which initiates sleep onset, time for bed. People who suffer from a dysregulation in their circadian rhythm can buy light therapy machines, like these above, that trick the brain into believing it is a certain time of day. One of the most significant research findings of the 20th century occurred at the University of Chicago when two graduate students discovered that the eyes move rapidly at certain times during sleep. This rapid eye movement will become known as REM sleep, a specific type of sleep correlated with dreaming, body paralysis, and a general increase in brain activity. REM sleep is often called paradoxical sleep because the brain is highly active, as if you are awake, but the body is paralyzed. Research suggests that REM sleep helps sharpen memory, cognitive abilities, and support overall brain development. This is why babies spend more time in this phase of sleep. As you get older, however, the majority of sleep time is not spent in REM sleep. Rather, we cycle through four distinct stages several times each night, about every 90 minutes. As you get into bed and start feeling relaxed, you enter stage one of sleep called non-REM1. This is kind of like light sleep. Your brain is producing slow brain waves called alpha waves. In this stage of light sleep, you may experience hypnagogic sensations, such as hearing or seeing things that aren't there. You may also have a sensation of falling or floating. You can tell a student has fallen asleep in class and enter non-REM1 because they suddenly lift their head and jerk their arms. After your mind and body continue to relax, you enter stage 2 of sleep, called non-REM2. This takes about 20 minutes. Your brain begins to produce sleep spindles, which are short bursts of rapid brain activity. Next, you enter stage 3, or non-REM3. This is considered deep sleep when it becomes really hard to wake someone. Your brain produces large, slow delta waves. Non-REM3 sleep is when children experience nightmares, bedwetting, and sleepwalking. The muscles in the body are not yet paralyzed. After about an hour to an hour and a half, you leave non-REM sleep and enter the final stage, REM sleep. As stated earlier, your brain becomes highly active, your heart rate increases, and your breathing speeds up. You can tell someone has entered REM sleep because the eyes begin to move back and forth under the eyelids. If you wake someone up while this is happening, they will most likely state they were dreaming. The sleep cycle then repeats itself. You return to non-REM3 sleep, non-REM2 sleep, and non-REM1 sleep. 
Here is a visual of the sleep cycle just described. Notice how we experience less and less deep sleep as the night goes on. In addition, the time we spend in REM sleep increases as the night progresses. Of course, you can't always predict which stage you will wake up in. If you happen to wake up in deep sleep, you may feel really groggy and disoriented. And if you happen to wake up in REM sleep, you may just remember a vivid dream. Before we move on, check your understanding of REM sleep and non-REM sleep. From what you just learned, put the following terms in the REM sleep box on the left or the non-REM sleep box on the right. Pause the video here. Review your answers. The ultimate question for anyone interested in sleep is, why do we have the need for sleep? What is its evolutionary, biological, and psychological purpose? First, from an evolutionary perspective, sleep protected our ancestors from predators. Sleep allowed our ancestors to quietly hide away during the day and escape any potential danger. Of course, protection cannot be the only reason we sleep because sleeping does leave us defenseless. From a biological perspective, research shows that sleep helps repair the body and brain tissue. Sleep helps the body recover from injuries, cuts, and even muscle soreness after exercising. It can also help the body defend itself against common illnesses like a cold by producing more white blood cells. Because we are constantly encoding information, sleep also restores and strengthens new memories. People are better able to recall newly learned information after a good night's sleep. Many students stay up late, or even pull all-nighters, to study for exams. But without adequate sleep, that information will not be encoded into long-term memory. Physiologically, sleep supports muscle growth and development. Sleep facilitates the release of growth hormones from the pineal gland. This is especially critical during puberty when adolescents experience growth spurts. Psychologically, sleep is linked to faster and more efficient problem-solving and performing daily tasks. It can even boost creativity. Sleep can also improve your mood. Research suggests that sleeping 7 to 9 hours a night can decrease symptoms of depression compared to individuals who get less sleep. Check your understanding of the science of sleep, stages of sleep, and sleep cycle. Fill in the blanks to make the statement accurate. Pause the video here. Check your answers before moving on. According to the National Institutes of Health, teens require 9 to 10 hours of sleep daily, while adults need 7 to 9 hours. This is because sleep is just as important as diet and exercise. The National Sleep Foundation suggests several ways to have good sleep hygiene, including sticking to a sleep schedule, staying mentally relaxed before bedtime, avoiding naps if you can't fall asleep at night, exercising, establishing a good sleep environment like room temperature, and finding a comfortable mattress and pillow.